Hello, scale modelers. Alrighty, so it's almost Christmas time, 2020. Uh, I know I'm a bit behind, but I'm trying to make up ground ever since um, this has started working. And I don't know if people were confused because of that one video I put up, but um, no. Okay, it did not just automatically start working. Okay, I've had everything plugged in, every single last plug and wire plugged in. I tested this thing multiple times and it was just not working. Okay, and that's the reason why I gave the control board to my buddy because he understands a little bit more about you know nanotechnology than I do I did not ask him specifics about what the issue was you know I probably should have but all I know is that there was a couple different spots two or three spots on the back of the control board were where the soldering was where apparently you know stuff was touching touching in spots where it was not supposed to be touching i don't know if it was just excess solder that was going from one of the areas to the other area you know like from one of the pins to a different pin i honestly don't know um so i mean i really don't know but I did not just magically plug everything in and stuff turned on. Okay, my buddy solved the issue for me with the control board. So, I mean, he, he took, the, uh, took the solder off that was causing it to not work properly. And once again, it happens. You know, I mean, not even machines are perfect. So... There we go. It's working. And if I had to wait to do my videos forever in order to get a uh, new control board, I mean, I was willing to do it, but even I was getting impatient, okay? And, you know, I mean, this is their own screw-up. This is the company's own screw-up, the manufacturer's problem why everybody was getting new control boards was either a manufacturing problem or the fact that they did misprint the instructions because I got that one month and it had another whole thing of testing instructions in it and I was like what that's how I found out the hard way. So when I went to go plug in that last wire and everything is lit up, you know, I shouldn't say lit up, but when everything was actually plugged in place, I mean, the board was still screwed in place at this point in time. And there's not a whole lot of room to work in the X-Wing. Okay? Got that last plug in place and it still didn't work that's why I took everything apart and I sent the control board off to my buddy to take a look at it for me I mean granted it did take a little bit of time because my buddy does a lot of stuff okay my buddy is always busy doing stuff so it did take a while Took him at least a month to actually be able to have enough time to sit down and look at it. I mean, the whole fixing thing, once he got to it, I mean, I I don't know. I mean, it probably could have taken him, you know, half an hour. I don't really know. So, but it's fixed. I don't want to confuse anybody by this. And that is not the thing of, or the whole reason for this video right now, okay? Because this is the video for issue 81. I've had, you know, month 21 sitting around for the, like the last 
four or five weeks now. I haven't done anything with it because I was trying to see if I can get the control board working either by my buddy or see if I can get a new one in the mail. Obviously, my buddy is the one who solved the problem. So, issue 81 of the Build Your Own Star Wars X-Wing. Ah! All right. And a uh, rear fuselage assembly. Uh, creating a starship fleet, B-Wing fighters and their pilots. Alrighty then. And yes, I have the entire X-Wing out because there's really no place I can actually put it at the moment while everything is stuck together like that. Oh, and if anybody is wondering about the R2-D2 build... I might have one or two videos that I can still upload for month 15, or is it 16? I don't remember. I really don't. All I know is that um, I got busy at work, and I'm missing month 17, and I didn't realize that I was missing month 17 and started recording month 18, and then I was like, wait a minute, I'm missing stuff. What the heck's going on? So yeah, I, I'm missing month 17th. Not only am I already two months behind on uh, making my build videos for that, I am now missing an entire month. No month 17, although they did say something about it in process, and I have the feeling that, um, it, once again, they're not going to have it in stock to ship to me again, but hey, I have month 18 already already recorded. <laughs> I have month 19 ready to go, but obviously I can't do anything with it because I still don't have month 17. It's just crazy, people. Okay, but still, let's get let's get to the X-wing here. And as always, I always, you know, take care of these little right in spots right here. So rear fuselage assembly. The X-Wing's most sensitive components, including the power system and hyperdrive, were protected by the ship's most solid structures, which include the tough metal framework and paneling between the four S-foils. So you end up seeing that, which looks like a giant rusty battery. Ah. <laughs> uh... Or, uh, I guess you could say capacitor going off to what looks like a fire hydrant. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. Alright, so, rear fuselage assembly. The parts provided include the next components to be added onto the X-Wing's hyperdrive mounting. This will ultimately be fitted into the top of the rear fuselage. And the other parts supplied are pieces of the framework that surrounds the opening into which the hyperdrive goes. Alright, so we have a uh, hyperdrive rear platform, hyperdrive rear platform top, rear fuselage uh, top frames, and more top frames, and center pillars, and Hyperdrive left rear platform mounting. Sorry, didn't have that up high enough, so we got that. Those are the parts this time around. And, like I said, I really have nowhere to put this sucker right now, so... I just got to, just got to leave it right there. And I left my uh, X-Acto downstairs, so I'm going to have to take my box cutter out to get this baggie open. And I don't know how sharp this sucker is going to be, because um, I really haven't used this sucker in a while, you know. Uh -huh. It still worked. And I was using I was using my Exacto downstairs. I brought it down so that way I uh, was able to do the little bit of extra lighting effect on my cockpit area which to me you know I'm no professional but um, 
and it came out looking pretty good. I used the nano lights that I got from Model Mods, and uh, you know, just mix it up a bit. Uh, originally, I was going to try to use that for uh, my DeLorean, and then I was just like, oh, hey, you know what? The X-Wing cockpit is lacking, so I'm going to do something about it. So, and I know I don't have this plugged in on the right side, but the, the way I have it wired, which is not professional looking, not pretty, but um, it's hanging off the wrong side, but uh, here we go. How do you like that? All right, I I know it's 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 very very bright. These are nano lights, but the, it's still bright. It's still a heck of a lot better than the uh, one LED bulb. So uh, this is actually the yellow bulb on right here. It's up off to the side. So I have a blue and a yellow, which the yellow looks orange in person. Right here for those two screens, and I have a red. I have a white and a green for that right there. A uh, white, a uh, green, and a blue. Now, to me, that looks pretty freaking cool. You know? And there, yeah, I, I know you can't really see it because of the light, but um, right here, there are spots where this white is. That are not even lit okay it's pretty much just lighting up one of those push button switches right in there and it looks like it's lighting them all up but it's not so I mean you can kind of see it right there that's pretty much just one square being lit there's one right next to it that's not lit and uh, kind of makes it look uh, uh, at least a little bit movie accurate when you're looking at it in person you can tell that I mean there are buttons that are because of the light that are kind of frosty not being used and but I just uh, I, I like it I really really like it and I'm missing a panel right here which I should have glued in place because this one fell off once before and I ended up finding it and, and now I can't find it because I kept going I kept walking upstairs and down that that whole day uh, working on the lighting and I don't know when or where it fell off and this piece even fell off that's not glued in place yet either so at some point I'm gonna have to glue that piece in and if I do happen to find that I am gonna have to glue that in uh, but yeah I mean to me that just looks a whole hell of a lot better so I figured I'd let you guys take a peek at that. And that is just with nano lights. Uh, and um, some, uh, you know, electrical tape. I put the uh, nano lights on the electrical tape so that way the uh, actual light spot was sitting up. And I just put it on the back of it and the uh, panels and where it sits back there is just, there's not that much space. So screwing it in place actually holds everything down, uh, which actually really worked out. All right, well, enough of that. Back to the, uh, back to issue 81. Okay. All right, so... Extending the hyperdrive system. The platform at the rear of the hyperdrive mounting is built up in three layers. After which you fit the two center pillars. All the parts are a simple push fit. And I don't remember which... Uh, there. I don't know. There was. It's either this month or it's month 22. Like I said, I have month 22 as well. Uh, there's a part in there where... 
something actually gets glued in place. Like, they actually put it in instructions that something gets glued in place. Alright, uh, step one, take the hyperdrive assembly from stage 80, which uh, we got right here, uh, plus all the molded plastic components supplied this time. Well, you know, I got that, I got that. Uh -huh. uh, take the hyperdrive left rear platform mounting, which has locating pins in two opposite corners. And is there an L? Is there uh Okay, so apparently this is the right side one. So this would be the left side one. All right. Step three, fit the pins into the matching holes on the hyperdrive mounting. Press the parts together so they fit flush. Okay. All right. So, goes over the hole. And then, just match the pins up and push in. Which, I hate to see it, but that's not flush. And that won't go in any further. There's probably got to be some, like, flash molding on there. But there's not. Why? Okay, so, hold on. I'm going to try doing that again. And let's see. Okay, there we go. Just push a little bit harder on it, and it goes down all the way. Okay. Step 5, fit the right platform mounting in the exact same way. Okay, so then we take that. And we do that. Okay, that one went in a lot easier the first time. I didn't have to push it extra hard. Alright. Step 6, take the hyperdrive rear platform, which goes this way around. Okay, and then, and they're showing it with the pins down. Okay. Pre step seven, press the locating pins into the rear of the platform mounting so it fits flush. And yes, there, okay, so there are, on the white side, there are four mounting pins which will match up with these four holes. All right. And then st step eight goes on to a different piece. All right, so that right there. And step eight, take the hyperdrive rear platform top, which goes this way around, which is this. And turn in the page. And step nine, press the locating pins into the rear platform. Okay, which... It's looks it's showing the uh, the holes on the one side facing in that direction, and then there we go. Let's push that in place. So so far that looks like that. All right. Uh, in step ten, so the complete assembly looks just like this. Well. Okay, step 11. Take one of the center pillars and match the pin on the end to this D-shaped hole. Alright, so, center pillar. Uh, I only see two D-shaped holes. Alright, so... Turning it just so I can see, and that went in really, really easy. And just so we can skip a step or two, I'm going to put the other one in, and that one actually has some friction on it. Alright, and then, must could have just been the paint, but uh, even that still went in really, really easy. So all the way up to step 14, so the assembly looks just like this, and there we go. And of course, we are not done yet. <laughs> 
because now we are going to be extending the framework. So extending the framework. The die cast metal components are used to extend a framework that cradles the rear fuselage assembly. Alright, so step one. Take the main assembly and all the metal parts provided this time. Okay, check. They're all right there. Step two. Start by taking the rear bulkhead upper frame, which I'm going to have to prop this down. And then take the nose cone down. And step three, which presses into place over the top of the rear bulkhead. Um, I don't know if there's a specific direction that it's supposed to end up going. Alright, well, there we go. It's pushed into place. Step four, so it looks like this. Okay, well, there we go. It looks like this. Alright, step five. Take one of the rear fuselage right top frames, which is identified by the letter R molded into it. Alright, and now I got to turn the page again. Alright, I guess that means I can just put that up there. Okay, so... Okay, that's an L. That's an R, so I will keep that in hand. And where what was that? Okay, that's another L, so this has got to be the other right. Yep, okay. Alright, step six. The pins underneath fit into these two holes in the upper rear fuselage. Press them all the way in. And... It looks like they're talking about all the way back there. All the way back there. Okay, so... Like that. I know you can't really see it, but... Um, zoom in time. Don't worry, I won't keep it zoomed in for very long and, and this doesn't really hold itself in too well all right so you got uh, a little slot there and a little slot there and those are round pins and these holes might be square and you know what they say is a round pin never fits into a square hole so, I mean, uh, that doesn't even really sit down all the way, but, uh, okay. Uh, step 7, take the second part with the uh, R molded into it and fit it in this way around. Okay, so there's uh, another couple of holes right in there. So we put the bottom in and the top. You know, I'm going to try... I'm gonna try doing. I'm gonna try switching these. See if maybe if they're different. All right, that fits in much better than the other one did. All right, and then we're gonna take this one and oxy. Oh, no, that one actually fits. Okay, so there we go. All right. Uh, step eight was when both frames have been fitted, the top of the rear fuselage should look like this. Step nine. Uh, left hand frames have an L molded into them and step 10 is fit one frame here and step 11 is fit the second one here all right now I am just putting these side by side okay so there is a slight difference Let's show you there is a slight difference in the size. So, size and shape, so that's what's going on. If you can see that. 
difference here and a difference back in here. Uh, everything else seems to be almost exactly the same. So it's just a question of getting it into the correct spot. And with that one, it looks like the thinner one went in the back. And all right, that actually fits awesome. And then Oh, that's a tight fit. But, but as soon as the uh, the upper framework goes in, that'll fit very, very awesomely. All right. And uh, step 12, the top of the rear fuselage should now look like this. Okay, and that completes issue 81. So there we go, and in case you're wondering, there's probably a spot right in the rear here for another piece of framework, and I don't see any more spots in the top for any of these kinds of frameworks, but there's uh, spots here and here, which probably on both sides which look like they're probably more framework spots so more than likely there's gonna be something back here because that's the uh, that's the rear right there and there's a couple little divots in there so yeah so yep yeah. there we go all right So, we are going to flip to the front page and coming in issue 82, Beyond the X-Wing, Legacy of the Design, Poe Dameron Fighting for Survival, and Rear Fuselage Assembly plus Hyperdrive and Frame Parts. Alright, so that's what we're expecting with issue 82. And that is in month 21 of the X-Wing. So, me saying that I have, I do have month, I do have month uh, 22 here. So, oh geez, what the heck did I do with the rest of those magazines for, the, for month 20? Oh, there. Alright, so, uh, month 22, so I have up to issue... 88 right now so so yeah month 22 would be uh, 85 a 67 88 so I have that downstairs and I'm gonna try to get hit cuz uh, I only have two months left for this build and I got to try to keep up I'm gonna try to finish it on time so that would be either February or March, so I mean right now I should be uploading month 22 or at least starting to upload month 22 Or at least finishing month 21 Either way but still And I do mean still That is freaking cool. I mean, I could have tried to see if I can get like a red light up over in here, but I only wanted to do three colors on each side and then two up front. So, it's cool for me. I mean, this thing's not going to get lit very often, but that was a simple mod to do. So, until issue 82 of the Build Your Own Star Wars X-Wing. Or, if I can actually get another R2-D2 up and going. Uh, as always, thanks for watching Brian's Builds.